What up, y'all? This is your girl Essence, and you are tuned in to yet another episode of Essence TV for Urban Gossip App. Let's talk about the Grammys. There's really only a couple of things that uh, happened at the Grammys that I care about. Justin Timberlake, Fi, one of the best performances that I've seen in a long time. That may have topped Beyonce, my friends. And it was just so smooth how Jay had the mic and he just came up out the same seat that he had been sitting in all night. And he just walked up there. He did his little part and then came right back off the stage and sat right back down like... I was like too hype about that. Like that mess was amazing. I know y'all have been waiting to hear what I have to say about Frankie O. Okay. Frank Ocean's performance was pretty bad. I admit it. I admit it. When I was um, watching the performance, I was so hyped. When I tell y'all that every time Frank came on screen, I screamed every single time. And when he performed, I got a lot of flack. From the people that I were that I was with, he claims that he couldn't hear his keys or whatever, and that you know his mic was messed. I mean, the earpiece was messed up. People argue that if you're a great performer, it doesn't matter because if you know your song, you're just gonna sing it and do it right every time, and that you know the earpiece and stuff is just a crutch. But y'all gotta understand that Frankie O blew up fairly quickly. Okay, like, and suddenly, he actually has only been performing for a year. Like, his first televised performance was last year. His first solo tour was last year. Like, he don't do all that type of stuff, so he may not be entirely used to it yet. Even his acceptance speeches and stuff, they were really awkward, so... I say give him a break. And yes, I'm taking it up for him because I love him and I adore him. I don't think that, you know, televised performances and live shows are really his lane. So hopefully he gets it together. Those are the only things that I really cared about at the Grammy. So that's all I have to say about that. I want to talk about Dorney. To catch some of y'all up who don't know because there were a couple of people on Twitter when all this stuff was happening. People were like, well, who's Christopher Dorner? So Christopher Dorner is a disgruntled former LAPD officer. Um, he was fired for allegedly filing false reports about excessive force. He claims that there was excessive force going on and that, you know, he got fired unjustly. He tried to fight it. He kept getting in more and more trouble. He was looking to the courts. Everybody was on the LAPD side. And, you know, he eventually just faded away and came back with a vengeance. I think it was like somewhere between five to eight years later. I forgot. But he, um, the lawyer who tried his case um, after he got fired, I think, that particular lawyer was on the LAPD side and basically fucked him over some kind of way. So he ended up killing that lawyer's daughter and fiance and then allegedly called the guy a couple of days after killing his daughter and her fiance and saying, you know, you destroyed my family and my life, so I wanted to destroy yours. You should have taken better care of your daughter and blah, blah, blah. Basically just, you know, mocking them or whatever. He also killed two, he killed one police officer and wounded two, and then he allegedly uh, stole a car, tied some people up and stole a car, they identified him, and then he they had this big standoff at a cabin, the cabin caught on fire, and they said that it was like a lot of conflicting reports, it was a lot of, a, a lot of crooked, sneaky shit going on like a lot of shysty stuff like it didn't make any sense to me at all but they eventually pulled a body out and allegedly and they just confirmed uh today that the body was indeed his i say that it's a bunch of shady stuff going on because first of all everybody thought that he had gotten away because nobody was confirming or denying anything nobody knew what was going on all of a sudden the um police cut the media off from filming the cabin and getting anywhere near like the media helicopters couldn't get anywhere near the cabin. They wouldn't let the media up to record anything just out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden the cabin just happens to catch on fire. And then they let it burn to the ground. Like they wouldn't uh, let the um, fire trucks come and put the fire out or nothing. They just let it 
run its course and burn to the ground. Other trees could have caught on fire. Other cabins could have caught on fire. They just let the shit burn. And um, they wouldn't keep anybody in the loop um, as to what was going on until like hours later. So everybody was thinking that he escaped. My dog was, um, he was a former military also. He had flight training and he also had, um, he was part of the, like the naval underwater warfare unit and he was seen before committing the murders um buying oxygen tanks my theory when the standoff was going on was that he bought the oxygen tanks either he was going to try to escape to some sort of body of water and stay underwater for like a day or two or something and then go to mexico or something like that or he knew that they were going to use tear gas or something like that, some sort of like gas to try to get him out. And he was using an oxygen tank so that he would be able to breathe and, you know, continue to shoot out. Or he planned to set the place on fire and he was downstairs in the basement with the oxygen tanks on so that he could escape. But alas, they claim that they found his body and that you use dental records to confirm that it was his body but i don't know the lapd they own some other stuff like for all i know they could be lying like i'm still team Dorner. i'm partially um on his side well more than partially i'm gonna explain why the lapd has a long-standing reputation of being corrupt and racist like this is nothing new since before rodney king so I feel like he was just another man that got fucked up by whatever little system that they got going on. And he raised awareness and drew attention to his situation the only way that he knew how. Now, the only thing that I'm not cool with is him murdering the daughter and the fiance. Like, those people didn't have nothing to do with nothing, or so I thought, because somebody told me that the daughter actually fucked him over somehow, too. Um, I forgot exactly what it was, but the daughter had something to do with all this as well. The, he wrote this long manifesto on um, that he posted on Facebook, and he named like all these people, and the lawyer, his daughter, and some other officers were among the people that um, he called out. Only because I was originally thinking that the daughter was completely innocent. I don't think that that should have... Um, that should have went down. He shouldn't have murdered them. But murder in general, I don't think was right. However, all I know is that the LAPD has this reputation, so it's not that far fetched that they fucked him over and they were going to get away with it. He was going to have to live his life knowing that he was trying to do what was right. He was trying to help innocent people that were being brutalized by the LAPD. And they basically fired his ass. And he tried to fight it going through this system that's supposed to help people. And he couldn't get it done. And he had to live the rest of his life knowing that he saw all kinds of corrupt, fucked up shit going down. And even if he got on top of the highest mountaintop and screamed about it it wouldn't have did him no good because the LAPD would have just found a way to fuck him over again at the end of the day he kind of got what he wanted to an extent they are reopening and reinvestigating um the circumstances behind his termination although at this point he doesn't he's not going to be able to live to see it if he if he really did die we don't know I was a little disappointed to find out that he was killed uh, because, among other reasons that I just mentioned, I really wanted to hear his story because that would have told us something. For us to see him with our own eyes, you know, on TV, being interviewed, because you know that if he had gotten caught and if he had been arrested, he would have been interviewed and he would have been able to then tell his story. And I really wanted to hear out of his own mouth because if he sounded Lulu, then maybe we would have been like, oh, okay, he got some issues. But if he had really been making sense, you know, that would have confirmed what the rest of the world, um, that are the, the rest of the world that's on his side was already thinking was that 
he was the victim of a corrupt system. And let's not forget about this audio that's circulating the internet um, that a news channel got of the um, shootout that was occurring during the standoff where you could hear some of the officers saying, burn that motherfucker, burn that motherfucker down, burn that shit. LAPD very well may have set that fire and they didn't give a damn if he was alive. Because during the shootout, he did kill one other person. They weren't trying to hear what that dude had to say. They was coming after that dude, and there was nothing that was going to stop them. I think they would have killed him regardless. As soon as they got to him, they would have killed him. They would have stomped him out. Even if, if there were a million cameras around, and they arrested him, and they took him to jail, they would have killed his ass in jail, and they would have called it a suicide. I honestly believe that. Um, but R.I.P., Again, I don't, you know, you you never know with stories like this. Um, all you can do is assume. I assume that he really was a victim of a corrupt system. And I feel bad for him. I really do. Not taking away from the families and loved ones and friends of those um, officers and those people that he murdered. But if those people did him dirty back in the day and they were going to get away with it and they were going to live with it and not give a damn, call it karma. We don't know the truth and now the truth is going to die with him. So. But on to a lighter note, right before I turned this camera on, I saw on media takeout that somebody... Um, has talked to a magazine and said that Beyonce and Jay-Z are into bondage, honey. Jay-Z is Christian Grey and Beyonce is Anastasia, okay? And I am not going to put up with y'all motherfuckers all of a sudden, especially my Twitter followers, all of a sudden being into bondage and shit. When I've been trying to school y'all on that shit, I have not um, actively participated in any bondage activities, but... However, it's been um, a long-standing interest of mine. Like, I'm very knowledgeable on that subject because I've done a lot of research in my day. I was, like, so excited to hear that Beyonce and Jay-Z was into that type of stuff because that's the type of stuff that's really going to have uh, black folks stand up and take notice on those type of things. Like, because even though the Fifty Shades of Grey book came out and it's like, making people more curious, um, like especially black folk, making them a little bit more curious, like people are still acting like that shit is like weird and taboo and trying to act funny when I talk about it on social media sites, but y'all are gonna get turned on to that shit eventually. I really think that this Beyonce and Jay-Z thing that's now circulating the internet is gonna make people start doing those searches on Pornhub clicking on the bondage category and seeing what's up but y'all motherfuckers don't forget who been telling y'all about that shit for years but anyway that's all i got for y'all this week that being said this is your girl essence and you have been tuned in to yet another episode of essence tv for urban gossip app be sure to follow me on twitter at essence atl iphone and android users make sure that you are all downloading urban gossip app from your respective app stores hit me up with comments tips and make sure that you all are subscribing to the channel show me some love download the app support your girl until next time ladies and gentlemen deuces